friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I have some planty chores to be doing so I figured I would bring you along with me as I do them. I have several things that I want to do. Don't know where that accent came from but I've got my little list here of like topping up moss pole cups, dusting, succulents going into pond, some new ones I have, repotting another thing, cutting my Mitchellitiana, sticky traps, cacti, so many things that I want to do today. So I thought I may as well bring you with me. <laughs> if you are new here and you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thanks for coming back. And yeah, let's, let's get into it. I think the first thing I'm going to do is water my moss poles. So let's, go do that now so i got this method from the jungle haven and basically you use a plastic cup with very small pinholes in the bottom of it and those pinholes allow water to slowly trickle down into the moss letting it gradually get moist which is way easier than soaking it all the time in the shower so i try and do this every two or three days to make sure that they don't get too dry and right now I'm doing it with mosquito bit water because I know my moss poles definitely have some fungus gnats in them and I would like to kill them if I possibly can. Classic me didn't notice that this cup was about to fall and I spilled water everywhere. So that was a joy to clean up. So I can take a lot off the list. I still have some more water in my, um, pumpy thing. I've got half the thing left and so I figure I may as well use that to water in the cabinet all the soil plants. I have not watered them in ages. Unfortunately I need to get better about it. I don't know if I've watered the soil plants since I was sick. <laughs> so it's been like a month now. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry plants. Um, no but they all seem pretty fine. If, any of the, if anything was like super duper not looking good I probably would have watered them already. But I am still going in with the mosquito bit water with these as well because I do know that I have fungus gnats in this cabinet. I think I want to replace these sticky traps too because they are covered in fungus gnats and I think some fresh ones might give me a better idea about how we're doing on the whole fungus gnat battle. I think in general it's getting better. I think. I feel like I'm not seeing them around my flat quite as much like they don't bother me as much and I feel like I haven't just gotten used to them they're not they're just like not flying in my face anymore so either they've gotten used to not flying around me or there's less of them I'm hoping it's the latter so we're just gonna keep going with my mosquito bit tea in hopes that they will eventually just go away completely really want them to go away I'm like they're just annoying more than anything else I know they're not really hurting my plants they just bother me and I'm the one who lives in my house so anyways let's water some stuff <laughs> Freaking gross these are. They're covered in fungus nuts. 
ew. I mean, I haven't changed them since like November time, I don't think. So it is quite a while, but uh, they need replacing at this point. They're gross. <laughs> so clean let's see how long these last I'm probably betting not very long that is two more things ticked off the list yeah I am just going to refill my sprayer thing because I like the water to sit at least overnight and so if I do end up watering tomorrow then I can have some mosquito bit water to water with um I guess now would be a good time to put some succulents and cacti in pollen because I'm currently liking that sort of situation in my bedroom. So I want my new ones to hopefully live the same. And then after that, I'll water them all. So they're all like watered at the same time because it's been a long time since I watered my ones. I think maybe early December time it was quite a long time ago so once a month is what I'm currently watering them they don't seem to be going like dry or wrinkly or anything like that so I don't think they're upset with it but I think it's probably time to give them another water anyways and if I'm repotting some into pond I may as well get them all watered at the same time so they're all exactly the same so like I said, I try to do this most days if I can. This is what the mosquito bits are looking like inside of the mesh bag. I'm using the dunks right now and right now there's still some chunks in there. So I'm just going to put it back and not put new ones in. And I am using lukewarm water still. I don't want to use it too hot or too cold because I'm afraid it's going to kill the bacteria. I'm not sure if that's actually an issue or not, but... I am doing lukewarm just in case because it's better to not risk it because I want the fungus nest to die and if doing it this way makes that happen, then I will do it this way. So these are the two that I want to repot. They would focus. This is a baseball cactus. Okay, man. Um, a baseball cactus that I got because I gave someone a bunch of plants that I didn't want and she gave me this, which was very unexpected and very thoughtful and I'm excited about it. And then my Senecio Angel Wing isn't looking great. I, I knew it might not be doing well when I got it, but I got it anyway and it's still not looking great. But this soil in here, I don't know if I can show you this well. Oh my God, that's a lot of roots. Holy cow. I was not expecting that many roots. Or is that a plug? I don't know, either way, there's a lot of roots in there. But this soil just looks like super duper dense. And I watered it yesterday in hopes that it would make it easier to unpot today. Maybe some of that is, um, yeah, I don't think that is all roots. I think it is like a bit of like planty mesh stuff. Not sure. But so this one, they gave it to me on a discount because I said they, I, like when I bought it from Cowles, I got it on a discount because I ordered like a bigger plant and they didn't have them because something went wrong. So they had to chop a bunch of it back, which I think this chop here was what they chopped back. And so. I don't know if this plant is gonna be okay even. Yeah, honestly, its roots feel like pretty unideal. It's got a plug in there as well. Either way, this soil just feels like pure cocoa coir. Oh my gosh, yes, it's a plug plant, that's why. That's probably why. Like. Can you see that in there? There's like 
an area there that's like where the plug mesh is which is probably why it's not very happy because plants that are in those do not end up being the happiest of plants so I'm not surprised it was not happy and just the soil is so dense I feel like for succulents you want like a really gritty soil not a super peaty or quarry soil I don't know so this is where we're at I ended up tearing off quite a bit of stuff I might try and save this piece um like I pruned a bit of the roots off because they're like the spindly ones and I'm just keeping the sort of main roots because those are what's going to grow best in the semi-hydro to start. I'd be so afraid of the spindly ones just going off quite quickly. But honestly these roots look super duper dehydrated. So I'm, I'm not worried but I mean the whole plant looks super dehydrated even though I watered it the other day. This might not work. <laughs> I will keep y'all updated on whether or not that one does work. It just wasn't the happiest plant from the start in my care, like ever since I got it, so it, it might be a bit too late. Like, I don't know, the leaves, they still have some firmness to them, even though the stems are really wrinkly, so I've, I'll give it a go. I don't think I should just throw it away right now, but that, and then... The baseball cactus is also in like super duper duper dense soil. There's no drainage in that. I just don't get it. Like maybe in the nursery that would be fine, but in someone's home where it's not like super hot and dry and bright, <laughs> it might not work and I feel like that's maybe why I've had such issues with succulents before is I get them and then they're packed in this like really dense soil and it just does not does not work I mean this one barely looks like it has roots like there's not really much on there unfortunately I'm gonna go rinse these off quickly try and get as much of the soil off as I can and then I'm really tempted to take one of these off and see if I can start it fresh. No, I'm too scared. <laughs> I'm not good enough at cacti succulents yet. Um, but I'm gonna rinse these roots and I'll be back in one moment. So they're all rinsed off. Just getting as much of the soil off as I could. And I think... I might pot this one in a tall planter because it's got like quite a lot of roots and then this little guy goes in this little guy. Hopefully that should be fine. And I'm just using Soil Ninja's Semi Hydro again. This is the fine stuff. And I'm using the fine stuff because the roots on succulents and cacti are pretty freaking fine and I would like them to not get like lost in too chunky of a mix. I also don't have any more of the chunky stuff at the minute so that's another reason. That was easy enough and then let me zoom in on this one. I mean, this very well might not work with this plant because the roots might be too far gone, but I'm hoping I can revive it. It would be cool if I could. Because I do really like how fluffy these leaves are. They're so soft. And I only just got this plant, so it would kind of suck if it died. There we go. Now let's water all of them, all of my cacti and succulents. Get them all nice and moist.
So it turns out I need to repot this one because it just was doing really badly. I think I'm gonna take the bottom level of leaves off. Maybe I'll try and propagate those, maybe not, I don't know. And then I can put it into a pot a little bit deeper because I think it needs slightly more. Just put this in there. That'll give it more stability going forward. There we go. That looks a little bit more stable. I'm hoping that it'll be fine. I'm just going to water it now like I did with the rest of them and wait on them to dry out before putting them back in their spot. Decided I will attempt to prop these and I'll just use this tiny little pot. I've got some homemade cacti and succulent mix here. It's just normal soil plus like a lot of sand and some grit. I definitely prefer my succulents in something more like that because I think otherwise they're not going to do amazingly in something that's not well draining. So, I'm just basically gonna fill this to the top and then pop each of these in like that. So it'll kind of look like a little flower. So there's potential for these to grow, but I've not been the best with propping succulents in general. I've not best, been the best with succulents in general. So we will see how these go. I will keep you updated. I'm gonna keep them with all my other cacti and succulents underneath that light. Because they're in soil, I will have to water them slightly more often. I will give them a thorough water right now to make sure that they're moist, but who knows about this one? I am very unsure. So while I'm sitting by it, I think I'm also going to chop the Michelisiana. I have gotten so many conflicting answers on whether or not I can prop this section here because it's like the woody part and it's got like nodes like all the way up it. But when I mentioned it in that older video, people were like, you can't prop alocasia from stem cuttings. And I'm like, yeah, obviously you can't prop it from like this if I cut here, but I'm pretty sure I can propagate it from there. So I'm just gonna cut it and see what happens. <laughs> well, I'm gonna cut it and then I think I'm gonna prop it in water because that makes the most sense to me. And especially if I'm gonna put it back into pond eventually, then that's where I'm at with it. And I can pot it deeper as well. Cause I feel like this one's just gotten like really tall and scraggly. Like you can't even see any of the leaves right now. So yeah, I'm kind of scared. Okay. I probably should have made sure that this was adequately watered before I did this, but you know, let's do it now. It'll be fine. I have chopped it. That is what we are working with right now. And I'm just gonna let this dry off a little bit and callus over because I don't want water getting into that. But then I'll just put it in some water. But this is like the biggest part of the whole plant. It's just really hard to show you because it's really all over the place. Maybe I'll take this leaf off because I don't like how it looks. I've just gotten so brutal. I mean, this leaf is perfectly fine. I didn't need to take it off, but now it's a better shape. I think it's not so sprawling. And then this, I kind of like it better already anyways. I should probably chop that leaf off. I can do that. Continuing with my scissor happy phase of January, 2023. Um, I'm not mad about it. I'm curious though, to see what happens with that rhizome stem bit in the middle if it will if it'll produce new growth or not i don't know so like i said i'm going to dry this out some people did say i could air layer this first if i wanted to but i don't want to i obviously just cut it so i could have done that and then waited for some roots to grow into it first before chopping it i think that's the safe way to play it but because I'm not necessarily feeling this plant loads right this second, 
I think I just need to put it in a place with slightly brighter light because it's just gotten really leggy and sprawly. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I can't believe I did that. I mean, like, I'm pretty confident it'll be fine, but I still can't believe I did it. So yeah, I will come back in a few hours and show you what I do with this because it does need to dry out for a little bit before I do anything else. So that is two, three more things off my list and the next thing on the agenda is to put this Hoya that I've had rooting in water for ages really ready to be pot up put that into this because this is also a Hoya Pupacalyx Hawaiian so, we will see, we will see. It's really dry, um, that's on me. But I guess that makes it easier. Because I can just plonk that in with it. I think I've forgotten to water it like several times over at this point, which is not ideal. But I feel like Hoyas can handle it a little bit. They're like fine with it. It's obviously not ideal. I don't, don't want to underwater them, but they can tolerate it a bit better than something like a philodendron might be able to tolerate or not tolerate underwatering. I should have grabbed some more soil, but I think I'll just be a bit cheeky and use my cacti and succulent soil. Because it's well draining, so it's not going to be that bad, and it's just literally for the top, top, top of the plant. So hopefully there's enough aeration in the, like, the barky bits below for it to be okay. That's good. And... That can stay in here. It needs quite a heavy pot because it is top heavy because of the trellis. So this um, terrazzo pot is perfect. And then hopefully, no, don't die, don't die, don't die. It's like immediately dropped a little bit on the floor. And then I can probably use this jar for my Vitaliziana. And I think it should be fine with that. It's nice and tall because I think the woody part is quite long on that. I've put it up high so I don't accidentally mess it up or like Cleo doesn't actually accidentally mess it up because it needs to like sit for a little while and I don't really want to have it standing up and then it not callousing over properly. I don't know. My brain just told me that's what I needed to do. So <laughs> that's what I've done. Um, but I will give this some new water. That's probably fine. Anyways, that's that ticked off the list. What else do I have? I feel like I don't have that much left. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk about a couple plants that I'm getting rid of. So because I got that wishlist plant, the variegated heart leaf in one of my recent videos, I now need to get rid of some plants because I'm doing the one in one out policy. I got two plants. And so I need to get rid of two plants. I have been messaging with someone on Instagram about potentially picking some up this week that I'm I'm not even selling them. I'm just like, take, 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 take. Um, and I, I'm also giving a bunch of plants to Claire the weekend. So I'm not like super worried about it, but I will show you what I'm thinking about giving away at the minute. So this ZZ plant is one of them. It's one that I got as a gift, um, not from family or anything, but I I just am not feeling it that much. I did also underwater it a little bit, so it does have a little bit of damage on there, which I know 
doesn't really matter. That's, this isn't why I'm getting rid of it. I'm giving it to somebody who I think would appreciate the plant a little bit more and hopefully get more out of it than I will at this current point. Right now, I just don't have the space for another plant of this size. It's unfortunate because I don't have this one otherwise, but I've got the ZZ Raven, which I prefer to this one. Not that I don't like the normal ZZ, but I feel like if I wanted the normal ZZ, I would have gotten it a while ago. So that's fine. So I'm gonna give this one away. And then I think I'm going to be giving my Hoya Crimson Queen away as well. I don't love it as much as I love a lot of my other Hoyas and between this one and the Crimson Princess, which I grew from cuttings, so basically nothing, I'd prefer to keep that one because it's got like a little bit more of a story there for me. This one is fine, it's beautiful, but I don't know, I had it on a trellis for a while, it was growing very, very slowly. I mean, it does have new growth on there, but I think someone can love it more than I can right now because I'm not giving it the love it needs. But oh my god, I have to dust so badly up here. Look at all of that dust. Gross. Let me grab my gloves and do a bit of dusting. I always feel so weird <laughs> wearing these gloves. <sighs> okay. I've honestly found these microfiber gloves to be incredibly useful and especially for plants with small leaves like these trailing ones. I can use both hands to rub the leaves at the same time. I'm also checking each of the plants before I dust the leaves to make sure that it's not got pests on it. Just because I don't want to be spreading pests around while I'm dusting. I know that was a concern a lot of you had when I showed them previously. And so I do check as I'm going. You can also use the gloves with some sort of pest prevention, like a neem oil spray or something like that, that protects the leaves of your plant. I'm not doing it right now because I don't feel like it, but honestly the gloves have made my life so much easier when it comes to dusting and it feels like a lot less of a chore than it used to. I think that's all the dusting I have in me at the minute. is what the end of the Alocasia Michelitziana is looking like. It is properly calloused over, it's not wet anymore. I could leave it for longer, but I don't feel like it. So I'm just gonna put this in the water <laughs> and see how it does. Oh gosh, maybe I need a, like a taller, skinnier vessel. Like one with a smaller neck. I'll have to find one if that's the case. Um, for now, it's just gonna be a bit awkward and leany. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that will hopefully work. I'll keep y'all updated. <laughs> So I think this is where I'm going to end this video. I got through all of the, like, the main ones that I was planning on doing today anyway, so that's good. Like I said, I've been trying to spread my plant tours out and do like little and often rather than like big chunks in like a day or something like that. So yeah, that is what I am trying to do at the minute. And I think it makes more sense for me and my current schedule. So that's where I'm at with that. Before I log off and do my end credity bits, I just want to say a very big thank you to my new patron, the newest member of the Good Growing Fam, the Swedish Hoya Noob. Thank you so, so much for joining. I really hope you enjoyed over there. If anyone else is interested in joining my Patreon, it is only three pounds a month and you get everything, all of the bonus content for that three pounds. And that includes extra videos, voting power, live sessions with me, and like general exclusive updates and stuff. So. If that's something you're into, I will link it down below in the description. Obviously, no pressure, but every little bit helps, and I definitely appreciate my Patreons so, so much. That is it for my plant tours video. I really hope all of you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below, and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future, and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye! Bye.